చెప్పిందా Yeah. So in recent days, Malcha Mahal was in news. Malcha Mahal. Okay. What's the gay video? Audio, audio. So audio and video are okay. Deepthi, Gyaneshwar, Swatigaru. No issue with regard to audio and video. Okay. Yes. So why Malcha Mahal was in news? Because all of you are well versed with the current affairs. Few people will study only current affairs without having the knowledge of subject. Subject knowledge is very important. Accordingly, you have to correlate the current affairs. Both are important in competitive in competitive uh, field. Even 0.25 marks also, I mean, influence a lot. Okay. Yes. So actually, Malcha Mahal is a construction, of course, considered by Feroz Shah Tukluk, And in course of time, it fell into the hands of the rulers of Avad. Okay. When they started residing in Delhi, because Delhi and Avad are very near. So actually now Delhi government wanted to uh, reconstruct that uh, Malsha Mahal. So few governments wanted to demolish the old constructions with the help of bulldozers and some governments wanted to construct. Now it has become a hot topic to conclude whether it is a mosque, temple or church. Okay. Yes. So the Delhi government is about to renovate the 14th century monument Malsha Mahal. It was built in 1325 by the then Sultan Feroz Shah Tukluk and was for a long time used as a hunting lodge. So when he used to go for hunting, he used to stay there. It is in Delhi. Okay. Yes. What is the time period of Feroz Shah Tukluk? Feroz Shah Tukluk time period we have discussed in our routine classes. Up to 1320, you are having the Kilji dynasty. After 1320, for a period of uh, six years, you are having the Gyatudin Tuglak, 26. And 26 to 51, it is the Muhammad bin Tuglak. So, this is wrong. 1325 by the Ferocia Tuglak, this, this date is wrong. Because in 1325, Muhammad bin Tuglak was the king. Of course, I could not change that. I am very sorry for that. 13, in 1325, Muhammad bin Tukluk. 
of course he will come to the throne in 1326 not even 1325 1326 to 1351 so in this period gajendra tuglak so this date is wrong but it was considered by the ferocious tuglak it later became the residence of the descendants of the nawab of awadh you are having the who is the last nawab of awadh so it, it is how to study the current issues along with the our traditional question who is the last nawab of awadh you are ready you are gattiga it's a little bit loud i think you had two or three plates of breakfast So Wajid Ali Shah. So he is the last Nawab, and uh, Awab, Awad is the only territory in India which was occupied by the British in the pretext of misrule. They have not used doctrine of lapse or subterranean land or war. Just in the name of uh, misrule, they have occupied the Awad. Two years ago, this question appeared in the UPSC prelims. Okay? Yes. Now. And in course of time, it was, it came to be known as the Vilayat Mahal, after Begum Vilayat Mahal of Awad. You know, what is the wife name of Nawab Wajid Ali Shah? Begum Hazrat Mahal. Begum Hazrat Mahal participated in the Sipai Mutini and he guided the forces in the Lucknow. Okay? Yes. That, who claimed that she was a member of the royal family of Ud, Ud are our same. She was given the palace by the government in 1985. When she died by suicide in 1993, it came into the ownership of her daughter, Sakina Mahal, and, Sinsa, and Prince Ali Raja, who died in 2017. Okay, so this is about the history of uh, that uh, Mahal, Malcha Mahal. Now, who was Faresha Tuklak? So, Faresha Tuklak was the successor of Muhammad bin Tuklak. And the actual name of Muhammad bin Tughlaq is the Juna Khan. And Muhammad bin Tug and Juna Khan will come to the throne by killing his father, Giyasuddin Tughlaq. And Tughlaq is not the name of the dynasty. It is the name of the person. Okay? Now, when you come to the Ferozsa Tughlaq, he is the third ruler of Tughlaq dynasty because first one was the Giyasuddin Tughlaq. Second one, Muhammad bin Tughlaq. Third one, Firosa Tuklak. Okay? Yes. Now, when you come to the, when you, so this date, the third rule of the, of the Tuklak dynasty ruled over Delhi. This date is wrong. Don't remember this date. I could not correct that. Very sorry. Yes. So, when you come to the Firosa Tuklak, and uh, he, he is placed in a unique position in the Indian history because he is the king in India who will implement or who will levy the taxes purely based on Quran. Many times appeared in the examination. He will levy the taxes only based on Quran. Like comes, zakat, karaj, and zizia. And even other tax which he um, levied on the fields was irrigation tax, which was called as ake ser. That point you have to remember. And the next point is, he will start his own coin, coinage. Ada, Big, Hastagani, and Shezgani. Of course, that things we have discussed in our routine classes. But still, I am trying to revise the concept. And one of the unique things of Firasha Tuklak is, he will repair all the constructions if they are in bad condition, by uh, which were considered by his predecessors, like Kutub Binar. Even now, Kutub Binar is also in the news, saying that... Uh, um, there is a Lord Ganesh idol and also there is a Jinnah statue and the two should be removed from that premises and they have to place in some other place where they will get more honor and they wanted to perform routine pujas. It was in the news maybe yesterday or day before yesterday, that's all. Of course, in that period, mosques were constructed by raising the Hindu temple. It is a known history. Take the example of Kautil Islam Mosque on the Sanskrit or Jena College, okay? Or on a Hindu temple. Okay. So, three points you have to remember. He repaired, including Kutub Minar. He also got the Ashoka edicts from Meerut and also Sopra and placed in front of the Ferosha Kotla Maidan. That is his palace. 
and he will also conduct many cities ferozpur downpur and ferozabad hisar okay yes okay now and uh, of course we have discussed he was the one who started the imposition of jizya the what is jizya or jizya it is a tax on non muslim a person who will not embrace the islam and if he wanted to continue as a hindu then they have to pay something to the government that is the jizya okay historically levied in the form of financial charge on permanent non muslim subjects of a state governed by islamic law to fund public expenditures of the state then again very important thing of the i mean ferroz shah tuklak is he will construct large number of canals he will construct large number of canals okay sometimes he is also called as father of irrigation yes now he will make all the post territory all the post territory soldier every post territory if for a soldier if that soldier is not blessed with the sun then is tanilla if he is not having any person even he can send his slave to the work and he can take leave okay yeah he made all the post territory he provided the principle of inheritance to the armed forces where the officers were permitted to rest and send their children to the army then what happened the army will become the weak it is the reason why feroz shah tuklak is not having a great achievement in the warfare okay yes yes however they were not paid in real money but by land the british called him the father of the irrigation department because of the many gardens and canals so try to remember if uh, uh, such kind of things appears in the upsc prelims or state services it is better to make a note of that yes now again when you come to the feroz shah tuklak in a nutshell he is the king who will try to rehabilitate the slave he will start a department called as diwane bandgaon so such kind of things will appear in your coming state services prelims examination diwane bandgaon to rehabilitate the slave and diwane kairat was a charity department charity uh, branch of department even istiak same and even he will also start a free hospital at delhi called as darul shifa or shifa khana or bimaristan so it is with regard to the feroz shah tuklak and again a little bit of information with regard to sikhism and you know teg bahadur who executed teg bahadur aurangzeb will execute the teg bahadur teg bahadur was born in amritsar on 21st april 1621 to mata nanki and guru hargobind the sixth guru who raised an army against the moguls and introduced the concept of barrier saints as a boy teg bahadur was called tagmal because of his ascetic nature tyag sacrifice like you people sacrifice your uh, life and uh, whatsapp messages everything you are not seeing only you have sacrificed to achieve the group 1 and group 2 examination and also upsc prelims okay ona asal gat okay theek hai he spent his early childhood in amritsar under the tutelage of bai gurudas who taught him gurmukhi gurmukhi is a script of the sikh sandhi okay hindi sanskrit and indian religious philosophy while baba buddha trained him in swordsmanship archery and horse riding he was only 13 when he distinguished himself in a battle against a mughal chieftain his writings are housed in the sacred text guru granth sahib in the form of 116 poetic hymns he was also an avid traveler and played a key role in setting up preaching centers throughout the indian subcontinent during one such mission he founded the town of chaknanki in punjab which later became a part of punjab anandpur sahib okay yes in the year 1635 guru teg bahadur was executed in delhi under the orders of mughal emperor aurangzeb at a place called as chandni chowk where you can find the gurudwara in memory of that teg bahadur yes now you know what is sikhism even earlier class also we have discussed the word sikh in the punjabi language means disciple the followers because sikhs will give great respect to the guru they will only follow the guru bani guru bani means that the sayings of the guru that is which are in the adi granth or guru granth sahib okay yeah 
How many Sikh gurus are there? So there are only 10. And after 10 Sikh gurus, which is considered as a Sikh guru, you have to remember after 10 Sikh gurus, Adi Granth is considered as a Sikh guru. Yes, yes, yes. Now, when you come to the preachings of Sikhism, Eki Omkar. Omkar means God. God is one. Okay? Sikhs believes in one God. Ek Omkar. They believe they should remember God in everything they do. This is called Simran. The Sikhs call their faith Gurmat, Punjabi, the way of the Guru. The disciples will purely follow the teachings and preachings and sayings of Guru. Unlike you people, you will never follow that. Okay? Yes. Again, to Sikh tradition, Sikhism was established by, you know, Guru Nanak at Talwandi, who was born at Talwandi. Okay? And subsequently led by succession of nine other Gurus. The development of Sikhism was influenced by the Bhakti movement and Vaishnava Hinduism. Actually, Guru Nanak established this Sikh religion to create a harmonious uh, relation between Hindus and also Islam. And he wanted to establish a religion which should be accepted by Hindus and Muslims. It is the reason why Sikhism will not accept the idol worship. Of course, nowadays, here and there, you are uh, able to see the idols of Sikh Gurus. But if you go to any Gurudwara, you will find only Adi Granth, which is chanted by the Mahant. Okay? Yes, no issue. Now, the cults are men and women who have undergone the Sikh baptism ceremony and who strictly follow the Sikh code of conduct and convention. That is, see, in the earlier days of Sikhism, so many people used to come to Guru Nanak and he used to give the baptism. On the day, the newcomer used to um, uh, wash the feet of Guru Nanak or any Sikh Guru or any person who is assigned that duty. And he used to drink and uh, put that water on, I mean that water on the head. And that is called as the Pahul. What is the meaning of Pahul? If a holy person touches any object, it, it will become pure. That is called as Pahul in the Sikh tradition. Okay? Yes. Now, they wear the prescribed physical articles of the faith. Five case, you have to remember, even Johnson has recognized their uh, right. Five case, cash, uncut hair, they will never cut the hair. Kanga, a wooden comb. Kara, iron, iron bracelet. Kachra, cotton underpant. And Kirpan, an iron dagger. Okay, Sikhism condemns blind rituals such as fasting, twisting. Of course, Sikhism condemns fasting, etc., but they have not uh, condemned the pilgrimage. Earlier, they might have not gone to more and more pilgrim centers, but now it has become part and parcel of their life. Every year, the Sikh persons will worship the holy shrines which are in India, especially at Latur, at Bidar, at Amritsar. You can see how many people will visit the Golden Temple. Their kitchen will cook nearly one, food for 1 lakh people. Okay? Yes. Of course, they oppose the superstition. They oppose the idol worship. Okay? And even the, they also oppose the worshipping of tombs also. Okay. It preaches that people of different races, religions or sects are all equal in the eyes of God. No doubt in it. The Sikh literature. The Adi Granth is believed by Sikhs to be the abode of the eternal Guru. And, and for your kind information, Adi Granth consists of the preachings of five Sikh Gurus. And also other Sufi saints like Farid also. Farid, Nanak and Bhakti movement saints. Okay. And for that reason, it is known to all Sikhs as the... Guru Granth Sahib. Now, what is Dasam Granth? Who compiled the Dasam Granth? That is uh, important. Why I am I'm repeating this? Because even yesterday also, we have discussed Sikhism in our routine classes. But here, there is a lot of information which we have not encountered in our earlier classes. Like Pahul. Dasam Granth is a book compiled by the Guru Gobind Singh. Okay? Yes, but some people say I mean, that book author is in controversy, but most accepted view is it is compiled by the Guru Granth, sorry, Guru Gobind Singh. The, the Sam Granth is controversial in the Panth because of questions concerning its authorship and composition. Now you know, what is the highest authority of Sikhism? Shiromani, Gurudwara, Prabandak Committee. And that, that was established by the British. And we have discussed in our routine classes, try to remember that Shiromani, Gurudwara, Prabandak Committee. Not more than that. And whose headquarters are at Amritsar. Now, we will go to the 
brief idea of all Sikh Gurus and most of these points we have not discussed in our routine classes. It is the reason why I took up this task to deal for you today. Now, Guru Nanak, he was the first Guru of Sikh and founder of Sikh religion. He started the Guruka Langar. Now, what is the meaning of Langar? Last class also I told you. Langar means a community dining. Such that the love and affection between the people will develop. Guru ka langar. At every Gurudwara, you can find the Guru ka langar. Now, he was a contemporary of Babar. It is very important. Contemporary of only Mughal king Babar. Now, Kartarpur Kardar was commemorated on the 550, 550th birth anniversary of Guru Nanak Dev. Okay. Of course, we will discuss that Kartar Singh, uh, Kartarpur Kardar also in the last. Now, Guru Nanak was succeeded by Guru Angad, 1504 to 1552. He invented the new script card as Guru Mukhi. You have to remember what is the contribution of Guru Angad. That is Guru Mukhi script. And popularized and expanded the system of Guru Ka Langar. That is, he extended that community dining to many areas. Guru Amar Das, he introduced the ceremony of the Anand Karaj marriage. Means, it is, it is normal marriage only, but he, he says that two families, that is bride and bridegroom, will join together. To lead a happiest life. Anand means happy. Yes. He abolished the custom of Sati and Parda system among the Sikhs. Uh, among the Sikhs. He was the contemporary of Akbar. Now, Guru Ramdas, we have to remember because he was the contemporary of Akbar. Akbar gave him the piece of land to construct the Amritsar uh, Sarovar. In course of time, that Sarovar de um, developed into a temple. He founded Amritsar in 1577 on the land granted by Akbar. He Akbar not only gives the land, but also revenue of Punjab for the construction of these sarovars. He started the construction of Golden Temple, Varna Mandir at Amritsar. But actually, it was started in the period of Guru Arjun Dev Singh. Of course, as he considered the sarovar, you can accept that. And even yesterday, I told you that a Sufi saint will lay the foundation for the Amritsar Temple. A Sufi saint, Mir Mans, Mir Mian Sahib. That is also very important. Now, Guru Arjun Dev, 1563 to 1606. He composed the Adi Granth in 1604. This Adi Granth consists of teachings of earlier five Sikh Gurus and also Farid and also few saints of Bhakti movement. He, he led to the completion of construction of Golden Temple. See, it is not Golden Temple, it is only Temple. This Amritsar Haramandir Sahib, which is called as Haramandir Sahib, was converted into Golden Temple by the Punjab ruler Ranjit Singh. That point you have to remember. Punjab ruler Ranjit Singh will convert this temple into golden temple. Okay? Yes. He was acclaimed as Shahidin D. Sartaj. He was executed by Jangir on charges of LP Prince Kusru. When Jangir's uh, elder son Kusru revolt, and it is said that Kusru will take shelter at uh, uh, this Sikh Guru, automatically Jangir got angry and he will ask the Sikh Guru to do some miracles. How a person can do, do, do miracles. Finally, he, he, even he was also fined. As he could not pay the fine, he was executed. Okay? Yes. Now, Guru Haragobind, he led to the... Now, see now what happened? They became the bitter enemies of Mughals. Why? Dangir, Dangir killed the Guru Arjun Dev. So, they became the enemies of Mughals. Now, the Sikhs became bitter enemies of the Mughals. Guru Haragobind, 15942-1644. He, he, he led to the transformation of the Sikh community into a military community. He is known as the soldier saint. That is Viri and also Piri. Soldier and also saint. Okay. He led to the establishment of Akal Tak, a fortified concession at the Amritsar. Akal Tak and fortified the Amritsar city. He waged wars against the Jangir and Shah Jahan. Even it is said that in one war, he will also defeat Shah Jahan. Guru Hararai, he was a man of peace, thus devoted most of his life in maintaining peace with Aurangzeb and doing, doing missionary work. Guru Hararai, sorry, Guru Harakishan, 1656-1664, he was the engaged Guru of all and was given the title of Guru at a early, very early age of five. And when Aurangzeb called him to Delhi, he will die at Delhi, uh, I mean because of a disease, very small boy, age of five. He, he was summoned by Aurangzeb against anti-Islamic blasphemy, but where he died, he died at Delhi. Now, Guru Tegh Bahadur, he founded Anandapur Sahib. And you know, 
Guru Tegh Bahadur Deshnam we have discussed, he was executed by the Aurangzeb. Now, Guru Gobind Singh, 1666 1708, he is the last Guru. He founded a barrier community known as Kalsa in 1699. He will call a big assembly of Sikhs. He introduced a new right, Pahul. Just now I told you, what is Pahul? Anything which gets into contact with the Sikh Guru, it will become more powerful. So, if, if new person wanted to join the Sikhism, they used to wash the, wash the feet of Sikh Guru and they used to put that water on their head. So, that water, as it was in touch with the Sikh uh, Guru, it will become powerful. Automatically, in contact of that water, you will also become powerful. Okay? Yes. So, try to remember Pahul. He joined Badur Shah as a noble. He was the last Sikh Guru in human form and he passed the Guruship of Sikhs to the Guru Granth Sahib. So, next Guru is the Guru Granth Sahib and after this, you are having only Sikh leaders. And next Sikh leader was Banda Badur, who was executed by Mughal Emperor Farooq Sir. Now, next is Kartarpur Corridor. So, actually, the aim of Kartarpur Corridor is to minimize the distance between two copper signs, one located in Pakistan, one in, one in India. Actually, the Sikhs who wanted to go to Pakistan, there is no need of any visa. But the, the Sikhs who wanted to come to India from Pakistan, they need some sort of visa. Okay? Yes. You have to remember this Kartarpur Corridor connects which two holy places? The Kartarpur Corridor connects the Darbar Sahib Gurdwara in Narawal district of Pakistan with the Dera Baba Nanak shrine in the Gurdaspur district in India's Punjab province. The corridor was built to commemorate 550th birth anniversary celebrations of Guru Nanak Dev, founder of Sikhism on 12th November 2019. Yes. To try to remember the two places. Darbar Sahib Gurudwara in Pakistan, Dera Baba Nanak shrine in the Gurdaspur district. And even the distance have reduced like anything. And you know, Modi, Modi has inaugurated that corridor. Okay? Yes. Okay, see now, uh, the government from a long period was planning to supply fortified rice to the, to the public distribution system, what you call them as the ration shop or fair price shops. Okay, what is the meaning of fortification? What is the meaning of fortification as far as food grains is concerned? Fortification. See, fortification means adding the nutrients. Now you can see on the milk packet, enriched with vitamin A, nothing will be there, but still only you can see the name. Fortified with vitamin A, vitamin B, etc. Okay? Yes. Standard operating procedure issued to maintain the desired quality of rice fortification. Why? To see that the body will get the desired nutrients. That is balanced diet. If you will not take the balanced diet, what happens? What happens, you know, you are having many diseases like Poshyarkar, Marasmus, many diseases. Our body needs all nutrients. Okay? Yes. The aim of this is to see that our body will consume all the desired nutrients for a healthy growth of our body and also mind. Not only body, mind is also very important. If you are feeling hungry, will your mind work? No, all, always your mind says, human being first go, go to tiffin center and have a plate of tiffin. That is the need of the hour. Okay? Yes, even I to add just now. Standard operating procedure issued to maintain the desired quality of rice fortification. The Department of Food and Public Distribution has formulated a standard operating procedure for the smooth implementation of the fortified rice distribution program. As per the announcement, of course, just I will debate. I will debate for just for a minute. See now, last month or since two months, there is a couple between the Telangana Chief Minister and uh, Civil Supply Center Civil Supply Minister Pius Goy on the issue of boiled rice. 
Actually, they are called as parabyal rods. Actually, what is the tissue? See, what is meant by this boiled rice? How this boiled rice will benefit the rice millers? And why, they, why these Telangana rice millers were involved in manufacturing the boiled rice? And the center generally will not purchase the boiled rice. Earlier they said that we are not going to purchase. They will purchase to a little bit. Now in the last month or maybe 10 days ago, center said that we are increasing our quota to, to procure the boiled rice. Now they will procure the boiled rice from the Telangana people. Purely politics. Earlier KCR said that you should not uh, show the padding. I am not going to take the padding. I am not going to purchase. Later, he said that center should purchase. And later, finally, he said that if center will not purchase, I will purchase. So, both parties uh, are just uh, uh, wanted to take the I mean, political mileage at the cost of farmers. Actually, what happened, you know, practically, the procurement process has delayed. What happened? Delayed. Now, the farmer is not having any way. He has sold the grains to some other party at a lesser price. Yes, that has happened because farmer will have a lot of debts and it will lead to the distress sale. Now everything is over. Now both have entered into the market. That is how the politics play. Because no farmer will keep because they, are, they will face a lot of problems. Uh, uh, rainfall and even uh, these rodents will also spoil the paddy. And first and foremost, they will be in need of money. Now they have sold to the rice millers at a throwaway price. Understand? Now, after, the, uh, after already the stock has been sold, now the government has entered. So, why the rice millers of Telangana have resorted for boiled rice? No person in Telangana will consume the boiled rice. Boiled rice is widely consumed by the people of Kerala. The idea behind this is actually what happens whenever paddy is subjected to the milling. You know, from paddy only rice will come. Rice will not grow. Paddy will grow. By milling of paddy only, you will get the rice. So whenever it, whenever paddy is subjected to milling, what happens? The percentage of broken will be there. Broken rice. What we call it as the broken rice, and that broken rice is widely used by the poultry feed, uh, poultry industry, and the, even the even that broken rice is also consumed by the idli rava manufacturers. What is idli rava? It is rice rava only. Many people don't know. Idli rava means see, if I ask somebody how idli rava is made, and this girl will say that by idli only. Many people don't know how, how idli rava is manufactured. So this is the broken rice. Suppose, see, this broken rice will give a lesser price compared to the, I mean, normal rice. So to minimize the percentage of this broken rice, before milling, the paddy is given the steam, heated in the steam, such that the percentage of broken rice will minimize. Understand? Of course. So that point you try to remember. The idea behind boiling it is to, one is to minimize the percentage of broken rice. Okay. Yes. No issue. Now we will move further. As per the announced schedule, the distribution, the distribution of fortified rice to the integrated child, integrated child development services. What is ICDS? It is the Anganwadi center. Anganwadi centers will distribute the uh, food. For the children below 6 years and lactating mothers and also pregnant women to see that the nutrition levels in that people will not fall. Even pregnant women also needs good I mean, nutritious food. Even lactating mothers, that is the mothers who give, who, who feed the, their children. So they also um, uh, need more I mean, nutritious food. So for that purpose, this ICDS was established, integrated child development scheme. Yes. And midday meals, you know, in schools, you will have the midday meals. Public distribution system and other nutrition and welfare schemes and programs will be completed by 2024. The Department of Food and Public Distribution is working to ensure the implementation of the rice fortification program. The, the Food Safety and Sanitary Authority of India is also playing a key role in the implementing of the program. Why FSSAI? That fortification should not add anything which is, which is undesirable for the human body. Human body cannot accept everything. Will it accept? Sorry. I mean, will it accept nothing? So, it, it will accept only the good things or which are safe for the human consumption. So, this, uh, this organization will play a key role. 
fortification of rice fortification is the process process of adding essential micronutrients which are needed okay because because of our change in lifestyle because of our change in food style we are not getting the desired nutritious level see nowadays what is happening every person is consuming the baked food baked biscuits baked bread baked pizza baked burger everything baked automatically your body will also be baked on one point day it will not give you the balanced diet our junk foods are causing lot of harm yes there is no doubt in it in seven days i was consuming early morning that alzirams uh, one packet so yesterday night i faced lot of trouble because of acidity yes it is a reason and because they will have the preservatives and i could not sleep in the night because of acidity problem now today i put an into that haldirams packet i am having one packet i will give to him okay yes fortification is the process of adding essential micronutrients such as vitamin vitamins and minerals to food to improve its nutritional quality and provide a public health benefit with minimal risk to health again why you need the nutritional food then only will have the immunity power why in the period of covid 19 doctor suggested to consume the multivitamin tablets to develop the immunity okay yes rice fortification is the process of adding micronutrients such as iron folic acid and vitamin b12 b12 see what is happening in india our girls are anemic they are having very less level of blood that is the need of the hour because it will lead to other consequences folic acid and vitamin b12 which is an effective and cost efficient complementary way to address the problems of anemia just now i told you i don't know why the indian girls are having less hemoglobin indika the problem unda nik ekku untadu hemoglobin okay okay nandi okay okay yes basics what is biofortification it is a process of increasing nutritional value of food crops by increasing the density of vitamins and minerals in a crop through either conventional plant breeding comma agronomic practices or biotechnology see what is conventional plant breeding see in course of time we have shifted to the hybrid varieties these hybrid varieties are not all few hybrid varieties are less nutrient so again we have to go for the conventional plant varieties which will have the good nutrient and you know agronomic practices what is the meaning of agronomic practices means suppose if you are growing a plant you will give some sort of nutrients to the soil so that the plant will absorb the nutrients and supply to the edible part see what is the meaning of edible part take the example of paddy paddy plant in the paddy crop will you consume everything only paddy grain so they will see that 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 nutrients will enter into the edible part that is the paddy grain if it is entering into the stack means again your cows and buffaloes will become more healthy and you will become unhealthy okay edible edible part that is grain so we will give nutrients to the soil and the soil will supply to the plants and the plants will give to the grain and grain will be consumed by us it is the agronomic uh, agronomic practice so such kind of things practically you have to remember don't try to mug up everything if you try to mug up everything on one fine day you will lose everything and when you are unable to answer the question what you will write okay yes and biotechnology by using the biotechnology setting also you will involve in fortification examples of this vitamins and minerals that can be increased through biofortification include pro vitamin a cottonoids zinc and iron how are crops fortified conventional crop breeding techniques are used to identify varieties with particularly high concentration of desired nutrients you know few crops are known for uh, i mean few types of i mean vitamin take the example of leguminous crops like green drum so it will have lot of proteins in it. and even if you eat that chilka wala dal it is excellent you have to eat the whole grains what you are doing you are polishing yes these are cross breed with varieties with other desirable traits from the target area such virus resistant drought tolerant 
high yielding taste to develop biofortified varieties that have high levels of micronutrients. For example, vitamin A or zinc or iron. In addition to other trade desired by farmers and consumers. Not only this, other if anything is uh, demanded by consumer, then they will go for the tart. So like nowadays you are seeing the milk packets fortified with vitamin A, A, B. Actually milk will not contain the even desired vitamins also. What is the, what is the, the I mean there is no, I mean nothing in the uh, packet milk condition except white colored liquid that's all. My personal opinion. Yes. What is agronomic biofortification? Just now I told you, you will give the nutrients to the soil. Soil will give to the plant. And plant will give to the edible part which is consumed by the mankind. It entails application of minerals such as zinc or iron as foliar or soil application. Drawing on plant management, soil factors and plant characteristics to get the enhanced content of the key micronutrients. So, that's now I told you. We, you will add the nutrients to soil, soil to plant, plant to the edible part. That's all. How does biofortification differ from food fortification? Yes. Food, fortic food fortification means at the time of I mean, preparing the food, you will add the minerals. That is food fortification. Okay. Now adding millets into your, uh, I mean, regular diet. How does biofortification differ from food fortification? Biofortification has the increased nutritional micronutrient content embedded in the crop being grown, whereas food fortification increases the nutritional value of foods by adding trace amounts of micronutrients to foods during processing. During processing or also cooking also. Take the example of Chirkuma. Chirkuma, what do you want uh, It will have kaju, badam, pista, etc. Automatically, it is a fortification of food. What do you want to say? What do you want to say? Yes, 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 yes. This is about the biofortification. Now, so, I mean, recently, our border road organization has completed the last and final blasting of uh, this Nechipu tunnel. See, you know, why India is going for tunnels? Earlier also, we have involved in construction of many tunnels because Take the example of Himalayan region. It is having the rugged terrain. If you lay the roads, okay, from that terrain, what happens? There will be the problem of landslide. And again, the soils are unstable. And the third problem is in that area, there will be all the time the falling of the snow. When there is no fall, there will not be any visibility. How the vacants will move? So, to keep away from all these kinds of problems, we are encouraging the tunnels. Tunnels will not have any problem like, to, I mean, precipitation in the form of snow or even landslides also because the tunnels will be reinforced such that they will not cause any harm to the either rail route or the road route. So, you try to remember this. Border Road Organization conducted a final breakthrough blast which marks the successful completion of excavation work of the Nechipu Tunnel. Nechipu Tunnel. The Nechipu Tunnel is being constructed on the Balipara Chauridar Tabang Road in the West Kamang district of Arnachal Pradesh. This tunnel is a unique 500 meter long D-shaped single tube double lane tunnel built at an altitude of 5700 feet. Altitude means height. The tunnel has been equipped with modern lighting and safety facilities. Why? If, if they are not provided again, the problem of collision, etc. The tunnel is constructed to deter extreme foggy conditions prevailing around Nechibu Pass, which have affected general traffic and military convoys. Yes, whenever there is snowfall, military convoys, because those regions are very important as far as uh, India's uh, sovereignty is concerned, because Chinese aggression and other terrorists etc will come okay yes the tunnel boasts of having state of the art electromechanical systems such as fire fighting devices auto illumination systems and supervisory control and data acquisition controlled monitoring system it is also provided with raised footpaths for safer 
pedestrian movement in between if uh, even if, if 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 men are moving even they can use this tunnel because after all the length of tunnel is only half a kilometer okay so man can human beings can walk very easily yes yes it is being considered by the border road organization the border road organization has successfully completed the construction of high altitude and mountainous tunnels in recent few years such as the atal tunnel in rohtang in himachal pradesh and the chamba tunnel in the uttarakhand continuously they are involved in such kind of activities now what is the meaning of metrology 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 see you are having two words meteorological meteorological means weather department weather metrology means weights and measures metrology weights and measures meteorological department weather department don't get confused with these two the thing which we are discussing here is the weights and measures world meteorology day world meteorology day 2022 was celebrated at csir national physical laboratory world meteorology day is celebrated annually on may 20th daily you will have one or other day that is the problem with the these days i don't know why one day human rights day other day girl child day other day women day other day parents day other day teachers day other day school day other day other day every day you will have some something and the number of holidays will go on increasing in course of time of course this will not be given any holiday don't worry about that yes world meteorology day celebrates the signing of the meteor convention on 20th may 1875 17 countries participated it is with regard to the international weights and measure standards see if you are not having any standards then how you will involve in the trade and commerce how you will transfer your goods to other country how they will give you the money so to avoid that you are having the international accepted units even we will call si system international in our childhood days we have studied cgs mks okay in our intermediate first chapter units and dimension okay world meteorology day celebrate celebrate the signing of the meteor convention so you have to remember very very simple to remember meteor convention deals with weights and measures like last class the days and management we have discussed Boone convention be in Boone convention born convention to put an end to the desertification yes 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 the convention has provided a platform for global collaboration in the science of measurement and its industrial commercial and societal application the world meteorology day project project is realized jointly by the international bureau of weights and measures and the international organization of legal metrology the theme for world meteorology day 2023 is metrology in the digital era yes now we are into the digital era everything in everything by digital so how far they will be good now you can see the electronic uh, uh, weighing balances what happens they can be manipulated very easily earlier we thought that they are uh, tamper free but uh, now they are tamper easy if you go to any fruit vendor or something like that one if they are having electronic weighing machine means they can tamper that very easily okay yes csir national physical laboratory the national physical laboratory was conceptualized by the governing body of csir and the foundation stone was laid in january 1947 csir npl is written in new delhi is a premier laboratory with the responsibility of dissemination of measurements to the needs of the country means what is the meaning of dissemination they will create awareness among the people with regard to this i mean measurement the csir npl is the custodian of national measurement standard through the weights and measures act 1956 just you remember weights and measurements act 1956 and even you are also having the state recognition act in the same year of course uh, act was formed in 55 but the states came into existence in 1956 yes and provides traceability to 
international system in India. The NPL has a statutory obligation to realize, establish, maintain, reproduce and update the national standards of measurement and calibration facilities for different parameters. See, actually weights and measures will play an important role after our currency. Understand? Business deals with the first thing is currency. If I two people have joined in our institution by paying the currency only, maybe through phone pay or Google pay or some people by cash. That is very important. Of course, I am giving you the knowledge and uh, unluckily there is no measurement for that. You cannot measure. Can you measure? You can measure, but you will not, you are not interested to measure that. Because if you measure, you think that, I mean, you have to study much, so you will, not, so you will never measure. The first thing important in trade and commerce is the currency. Then the second thing is very important is in what units you will purchase. Now, see, we are exporting the, of course, last, till last month, we have exported the wheat. For that, we will use the kilogram as the unit. So, next is the unit. Then, how we will conclude the unit? By, with the help of a weighing stones or a electronic balance. Or you can see the big weighing machine where lorries are kept on that weighing machine and uh, you will get the weights. Will you accept the uh, will you accept the fake currency? Nobody will accept the fake currency. In the same way, this metrology will also give standards to the gold also. Will you accept the fake gold? Nothing of that kind. Again, see now, you have purchased 100 kg of, say, some item steel. And you will use a weighing uh, machine to that. If it, if it is tampered, then how much you will get? You will get only... 95 or 96 kg and that businessman know that definitely he is, he is going to give you less weight of steel then what he will do he will quote uh, less price for the steel why he is not giving you the 100 kg but he is taking the money for 100 kg he is weighing only 95 96 kg or say 97 then what happens the total business will get ruined other genuine people cannot do the business. For that purpose, time and again, the, the, I mean the Department of Legal Metrology will check the weighing system in the country and they will stamp on that, whether it is working in a fair manner or not. You can see sometimes in the newspapers that legal metrology people uh, uh, conducting a raid on the supermarkets and, and penalizing them. Why? They will see that 50 or 100 grams of goods will be less. Because you want offers, not quality. You want offers, not quality. You want offers, not quantity. Okay? So what I mean to say is, as currency is very important in the trade and commerce, in the same way, weights and measures are also very important. See, if you purchase a gold of 10 grams, you know now it is more than 50,000. If that, if that jewelry shop owner is having the tampered mission, Say you, you got only 9 grams, then how much you will lose? So, consumer's rights will be deprived. So, to see that such kind of things will not happen, there is a department of legal metrology. Time and again, they will check the system. Not only the physical weights, but also the electronic weighing system. Okay? Yes. I hope you understood why the weights and measures de department is very important. Because it, they, they are, all are not vegetables. Vegetables means, okay, okay, little bit. Now, in course of time, even vegetables also, they will uh, weigh in a fair manner. If the prices increase by, say, for 1,000 rupees kg of vegetables, then they will use electronic balance. Even for 1 gram also, they will charge computerized bill, like in the Reliance Smart. Even if you take the vegetables also, computerized bill. For 1 gram also, you will get the bill. Okay? Yes. Now, Calibration facilities. What is calibration? Calibration means suppose now you if you want to make a tanker for understanding purpose, tanker 
to supply the water to the government agency. You will say that your tanker capacity is 5000 liters. How you will come to know that this department will, will make the inspection and they will accordingly say that your tanker is having the capacity of 5000 liters. That is the meaning of cal calibration means giving the standards. Even in our uh, BTEC first year, you will uh, calibrate various scales. I, I don't know whether you did that or not because you don't know what you did yesterday also. Once you sleep in the night, everything will be erased from your mind. Okay? Yes, my dear. Okay. Please recognize the importance of weights and measures in the trade, not only indigenous but also in the international trade. You can see many people involving in this calibration business. You can see the boards. We involve in calibrations, calibrations, calibrations. They will be given certificate by the government authority. They are right person to calibrate. Okay? Yes. CSIR NPL currently maintains 6 out of 7 SI base units. They are meter, kilogram, second, Kelvin temperature, ampere, electric current, candela, light. So at least you try to remember this and even I told you, you go through all the units and measurements. All the units. Understand you are having Weber's per meter square which is also called as Tesla. You are having the volts. Okay. You try to have a look on that. R&D is underway to realize and establish the 7th SI base unit of mole or mole chemical number. Do you know? We will, uh, in our lab, you will found the molarity. With the help of titration, when the color changes, we will calculate how much water is used, how much that liquid is used. V1, N1 is equal to V2, N2, if I am not wrong. Or V1 by N1 is equal to V2 by N2. We are having some sort of equation. Of course, you people don't know anything else. Ticket, ticket, ticket. Now, next is the National Innovation Foundation. A startup incubated by the National Innovation Foundation won the Amazon Award 22. The National Innovation Foundation was established in 2001 with the support of the Department of Science and Technology. NIF is an autonomous body of the Department of Science and Technology that helps the industries with respect to energy needs, cost reduction and environmental protection. The name itself says innovation. That is to see that every resources are used in a judicious manner. Now take the example of 5 star rating air conditioner. What is the benefit of that? It, they will consume less power. So automatically if you consume the power, that money it is the money you have earned. If not, you have to pay to the KCR or DSSPDCR. Okay? So the aim of this uh, National Innovation Academy is to see that all the resources are used in a fair manner. Okay? Without causing harm to the ecology and cost reduction whenever there is cost reduction then only factories will run in profit when factories will run in profit they will invest more and more when they will invest more and more automatically employment opportunity will be increased like anything nowadays there is stiff competition now take the example of two-wheeler industry what is happening earlier there were only two brands as far as two-wheeler industry was concerned very hardly three and honda hero honda they, I mean, there was Hero Honda and the second was uh, I mean Suzuki and third was Bajaj. Now you can see how many brands are coming. If you go to put, if you go to purchase the, if you want to purchase any electrical um, and moped, you are having hundred types of brands. Now in course of time, what happens? The famous brand will be thrown away. Now you can see on the roads, many local brands are uh, seen in the seen on the roads. They are not caring. Why they know the the motor is same, the battery is same. Then why you have to pay the premium to the branded vehicle? That is what happening. You can see on the road how many local scooters or mopeds are flying. Okay. That will throw a challenge to the big industry. So in course of time, last maybe 10 days ago or 15 days ago, Amazon has given its results. saying that the sales have fallen like anything. And even they said that in course of time, we will not get good profit, uh, good profit because of high inflation, high inflation. And even the commodities are also have also increased. Now we cannot give the commodities at a cheaper rate. Now you can see the paper price. The paper price has increased by 50%. The, the publishers are keeping their hand, keeping hands on the red. What to do? 
now they cannot increase the price uh, uh, and uh, and um, it is the reason why they are not printing the books even take the example of telugu academy you are not getting the books why paper cost is more okay 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 so innovations are very important its mission is to help india become a creative and knowledge based society by expanding policy and institutional space for grassroots technological innovation means even in a village also if there is any any innovation it should be accepted or it should be honored by the uh, i mean this uh, body and uh, that knowledge should be disseminated throughout the india as that everybody will get benefit of that that is a very very important point of this organization now world economic forum that is nothing but you are having a meeting at davos all political leaders i am of course not political leaders the state chief ministers etc entering why to see the opportunities the industries will see the opportunities and also policies of government take the example of telangana you are having ts ipas accordingly they will exchange their views and they will try to invest now telangana got lot of investment in the same way all states in the same way all countries so it is a duty of world economic forum to see that there will be a meeting of both investors and also acceptors okay yes world economic forum a world economic forum meeting is taking place in davos yes the world economic forum is the international organization for public private cooperation it was established in 1971 as a not for profit organization that is very important headquarters you have to remember you may get such kind of things in the trade services geneva in switzerland many international organizations headquarters are at geneva in switzerland first to make the make the note of all the organizations which are having their headquarters at geneva then you can remember them very easily world economic forum engages leading political business cultural and other key individuals in society to shape global regional and industrial agendas the forum believes that progress takes place by collaborating with people from all walks of life yes in industry needs everybody with have that who have the drive and the influence to make positive change so that is the aim of the world economic forum yes for hydroelectric project is uh, considered on which river kanthila for hydroelectric project is uh, constructed on which river civil service aspirant to chap donga nu yes sandi chinab okay for hydroelectric project the cabinet committee on economic affairs has approved the 540 megawatt quar hydroelectric project on the chinab in kishwar district of jammu and kashmir this is part of the indus basin and would be one of at least four projects coming up in the district actually you know we are having a treaty with pakistan indus treaty is with the pakistan according to that treaty india should use 20% of waters in the river indus and we are having major share in the i mean tributaries of river indus like jhelum sorry in the Jhelum, Chinab, Ravi, Bias, Satluj, which are divided into eastern side rivers and also western side rivers. Okay? Yes. Four prayers coming because now we want to use the share in the other rivers. And you can see when the uh, Pakistani terrorists attacked uh, uh, our uh, I mean, military convoy or 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 ASP, uh, our Modi said that blood and water cannot flow in the same river, and he said that. we will utilize all the waters uh, which are which are allocated for the uh, for our indian state okay yes including the 1000 megawatts pakal dul hydro project and 624 megawatts on of the river kiru hydro project under the 1960 vintage treaty indus water treaty is signed between india and pakistan in 1960 indus water treaty between india and pakistan the two countries shared the waters of six rivers in the indus basin try to remember six rivers one is indus and the five of its tributaries at that flow throughout uh, through india towards pakistan of these india has complete rights over the three eastern rivers satluj bees and ravi dekhiye satluj 
Bias and Ravi, these are called as the eastern rivers. I mean, and the remaining are called as the western rivers. That is Silam Sinab. Okay. With the Satellite Bias Sinab. They are called as the eastern and the remaining western. Even the Sunday. What happened? Hmm? Okay, okay, okay. Right, right, right. Yes. Good, good boys and step in. Yes, yes, yes. Between India and Pakistan, the, the two countries shared the water of six rivers in the Indian basin that flow through India towards Pakistan. Of these, India has complete rights over the three eastern rivers, Cutlass, Bias, Ravi, while Pakistan has rights on the western rivers, Sinab, Jinab. Please try to remember these western rivers and the eastern rivers. Don't get confused. Because it is always confusing why, how they are demarcated. Cutlass, Bias, Ravi, while Pakistan has rights over the western rivers, Sinab, Jilam and, Sinab, Jilam and Indus. The core project will be implemented by Sinab Valley Power Project Limited, a joint venture company between. See, actually, why nowadays you can see these corporations are established? For every project, there is a corporation, unlike the earlier days. For every pack, they are establishing corporation to take the loan in the name of that corporation, only to get the loan signed. You can see in Telangana, n number of corporations to take the loan. Company between NSPC, National, National Hydropower Corporation, Limited and German Kashmir State Power Development Corporation. The practice is just to remember the dam. There is one of all these things. And the project is expected to generate 1975.54 million units in, in a 90% dependable year. What is the meaning of uh, this million units in 90% dependable year? Means if the average rainfall is 90%, then you will get this power. Okay? Yes. If there is no rainfall, no water in the river, no power generation. The construction activities of the project would result in direct and indirect employment of about 2,500 people. You remember this. Some of the important project dams on Chinab, Rattle Hydroelectric Project, Salal Dam, Dulhasi, Pakal Dam, Kiru Hydroelectric Project. So, this is sufficient as far as uh, these dams are concerned. At least you remember on which river new dams are coming. Old dams, everybody know. Okay. So, this is all about, I mean, today's current affairs. So next week you will not have the current affairs class because you people are having the UPSC examination. So next week we will have the holiday ending. Even sir is not available. I mean Amrishwar sir. So next Saturday Sunday you, I mean you will not have any classes uh, because of our UPSC examination. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.